So as a continuation, again, we have another typical exam question, uh, which is November 2024 exam that we are going to consider. So not wasting our time. Uh, it is direct, guys, and straightforward. 1.1, name three types of clutches. Three types. Remember, those are the types that we had in our syllabus. We worked with the plate clutches. All right. We also worked with the corn or the conical. You can have it as a conical clutches. All right. And um, we also worked with the central figure. That is the central uh, clutches. These are the clutches that we worked with. And remember, on plate clutches, we are not supposed to mention that, but I'm just for you to remember. Uh, we dealt with the single, the single plate clutch, and the multi plate or the multiple, the multiple plate. Remember, those are the types that we worked with. Uh, so you are supposed to remember all this, all right? But that one is just to list the three. That is uh the ones that I listed. All right. So a con. Clutch, we are given on question 1.2. We are dealing with what? A corn clutch. Remember when we dealt with these formulas on a corn clutch, so we're not going to waste our time, guys. Everything is uh, dealt with. And I talked about this, that when you are dealing with a corn clutch, you must know that it follows the uniform pressure or the uniform wear theory. So that part, you are supposed to know it. So they are saying it's a corn. So according to our information, that's a corn clutch that we are working with. And also, let us take the information here. Uh, at the end of the statement, they are saying assume uniform wear, meaning to say we are dealing with an old clutch. We are working with a uniform wear theory. Uniform wear theory, which is for what? For old clutches. For old clutches. All right, so that is it. Uh, so it was just like that, guys. Then we are given that the included angle is what? 30 degrees. Remember, I told you guys from included angle, you have the half angle. You must divide that one by what? By two. So that's 30 divided by 2, which is 15 degrees. And transmit 30 kilowatt at this speed. So we've got the power 30 kilowatt at that speed that we are given at this speed. So at the speed of 1,100 revs per minute. The outer diameter is this. So remember, outer diameter, we have outer radius divided by 2. So 200 by 2, it was going to give us 100 millimeters. Then we divide by 1,000, meaning to say our outer radius was going to be 0, 0,1 in meters. All right. We have the inner diameter this time. So we're going to have the inner radius from the inner diameter over 2. So divide by 2, it was going to be uh, 75 millimeters. Then divide by 1,002 meters. The inner radius was going to be 0, 0,075. In what? In meters. Then also we have the coefficient of friction of 0 0.28. So our coefficient of friction is 0 0.28. That is the information, guys. I just hope we took this uh, together. Now calculate the following. From that information, it is best that you list, then you just calculate. It will be easier, guys, for you to see what is missing from the information. All right, 1.21, the torque transmitted by the clutch. So what is the torque that is being transmitted? Guys, there is power, there is speed. That one is a straightforward question. Remember, this power is equal to uh, 2 pi nt over 60. If this is not revs per minute, I talked about this. So the torque is already there, guys, that we need. Simply going to make it the subject. This was a straightforward question. Just cross multiply. 60p is equal to 2 pi nt. We need the torque. So therefore, the torque is going to be 60p over 2 pi n. 
So that's it. We also talked about these guys. Remember on those formulas here, the power, we can even from that power, we can make talk the subject of the formula. All right. So that's it. Let us substitute into the formula. So therefore, the torque was going to be 60 times the power, which we are given as uh, 30 kilowatts. So this is 30 times 10 to the exponent of 3 over 2 pi times our speed, all right, in rest per minute, 1,100, just like that. So we are going to substitute this and use our calculator to simplify. Uh, let's see what were we going to have. All right, what did I just do? Okay, let's see. That's 60 times 30 times 10 to the exponent of 3 everything over 2 pi so this is 2 pi times 1100 like this so you're going to have 260 uh comma 438 260 uh comma 435 not 435 remember the torque is measured in what newton meters so that is what we're going to have at the end of the day all right, so let us take this talkie, guys, and just put it aside. Never know. We might need this in other calculations to come. So that is what we just calculated. The talkie, we've got 260,435 in what? In Newton meter. So that was the first question. All right, and then the axial force applied to the clutch surface, the axial force applied. They they want exactly the axial force, exactly the axial, not uh, the one that is to hold or to engage or what. No, no, no. Exactly the axial force. Remember, the axial force is the same as the spring force also. All right. But uh, I also talked about this uh, on the axial force. And from this talk that we just calculated, so now it is up to you guys. Uh, remember, we are dealing with a corn and we are dealing with an old clutch. And this is what I said at the end of the day. The formula is supposed to be like uh, the one that we said corrected is supposed to be two, not a four. So it's either you're going to work from this side, you, call, you find missing values, find the normal force, then you can find whatever that you can do from there. Right, it was up to you, or you can just make it direct the subject here as we can see it. It is uh directly uh given. So I'm going to take that one, which is on the formula from the talkie that we calculated. So definitely we're not gonna have exact exactly values, but there will be those values in the in the range of what we need because of the rounded off values. But this is the exact part that you're gonna have here. All right, so remember. This here is our effective radius. If we take this over this, that's our effective radius. So it is up to you guys. So let us make this the subject. Uh, we made the subject from our previous uh, question paper. Remember, it ended up with a two sine of beta, all right, which is going to multiply the torque that we have there. Then we're going to divide by the coefficient of friction and R plus R this one. So you're gonna have it like this. All right, so let us see what way we're going to have at the end. We're just gonna substitute the values as we have them. All right, so our actual force was gonna be two sine of beta, where our beta is uh, 15 degrees. So that's 15 degrees. The torque that we calculated, uh, remember we got 260. Uh, 260,435, like this. All right, everything over the coefficient of friction, uh, 0 0.28. That's 0 0.28 times the R plus R that we have, uh, the outer and the inner as they are. So that's uh, 0 0,1 plus uh, 0 0,075, like this. All right, but if you are to consider this, uh, all right, I'm going to wake out with another other part of formulas so that we prove to say that this formula, guys, is valid. 
uh, I talked about this in another class, but still I feel like we just need to talk about this again and again and again uh, because if a wrong formula is being used, uh, people tend to stick to the wrong formula than to stick to what is right. So that is why I'm keeping on repeating this part, guys, so that at least we can understand each other at the end of the day. All right, so this is what we're going to get uh, as our actual force, 2751,246 in Newton. All right, so that is our actual force. If we had to calculate uh, from this formula uh, that we just had uh, from this presentation. So I want you as an individual to consider that work in as much questions as you can all right work in as much questions as you can uh to figure out how these questions are being given all right so we like i promised we're gonna have another part we still need to calculate this same actual force right so this is was our answer let us have another way another way so let's say you still have challenges on understanding that formula, you still can avoid it. But still you've got same answers if we use the consideration that the torque does not change its consideration from where we are calculating it from. Uh, remember we said our torque can be given as the coefficient of friction times the normal force times the effective radius times N where our n is equal to one because we are dealing with what a corn clutch n is equivalent to one so this part we can even neglect it so we can determine the normal force because we know that from the normal force the axial force can be calculated remember we said axial force is equal to the normal force times the sine of beta so it means let us do that way and see all right so let's calculate the normal force we do as if uh, we are not asked to calculate the what? The axial. We calculate the normal, the one that we have on our formula there. So the normal force is equal to what? It's going to be torque over coefficient of friction times our effective radius, which we do not have. So we're going to calculate RE, uh, this one, because we do not have it. So for us to determine this, remember we are dealing with the old, or we are dealing with the uniform wave theory where our RE is same as the mean radius, which is the average, all right? So that is the average there. So we're going to take uh, 0, 0,1 and the 0, 0,075 uh, divide by 2. That was going to give us our effective radius in this manner. All right, so that is for old clutches, guys. We have to consider equivalent to the mean radius, which was going to be 0, 0,08. Uh, seven five. All right. For the sake of having uh, exact values, let me not round off. Let me take it as it is. So with this effective radius, let us substitute into this formula and calculate the normal force. So our normal force, that's the torque that we calculated. All right. Uh, 260, this one. Remember, it was rounded off. No problem. That was 260,435. Everything over the coefficient of friction, which we had as uh, 0, 0,28. That was 0, 0,28, not 0, all right, 0, 0,28. All right, then our effective radius we just calculated 0, 0,0875. All right, so this is what you are going to have uh, at the end of the day. We're going to have our normal force. All right, so let's have that normal force and see uh, what were we going to have as the numerical value. We need the numerical value. So that's 260,435, everything over 0, 0,28 times, uh, that's 0, 0,0875, like this. So you're going to have this, guys, 10,630, all right? That's uh, 10,630 in what? In Newton. But we are seeing the normal force 
is going to help us to determine exactly the axial force because from there we know that the axial force is the product normal force times the sine of what of beta so 10630 which is our normal force that we got times the sine of what of beta where we have our half angle of what 15 degrees so let us see what we were going to have so that is the sine of uh, 15 uh, degrees so remember the axial force that we obtained previously, we are supposed to have a value which is closer to that. So as it is here, just times the sine of what? 15 degrees. All right. So as we can see, we are obtaining exactly, uh, exactly the answer that we obtained previously, 2,751,246 in what? In Newton. So this is to show you guys that both conditions are valid in our simplification. We can work it from this manner. We still have the same answers as we can see. So that is to prove you guys that to say any formula that you have there, as long you are using a correct formula, guys, as long you are working with a correct formula, you are supposed to have same answers. So for anyone who has got any other formula that you think uh, we can also use or put into consideration. The comment section is there. Let us communicate so that we can see what to do in the next classes. All right, 1.23, the force required to engage. Yeah, to engage. So we are talking about the axial force to engage. All right, so the axial force to engage, we talked about these uh, formulas. If we still remember... Uh, previously what we had. We still remember here force to engage, all right, which is the total axial force to engage the clutch. Can calculate from this. So let us substitute our values. So as you can see, that is the axial force into one plus the coefficient of friction over the ton of beta. So this one was direct and uh, straightforward. Our axial force, we just calculated this one. All right, so we're going to substitute as it is. That was 2,751,246 into 1 plus the coefficient of friction of 0 0.28. That's 0 0.28 over the ton of beta. So our beta, which is what? Uh, 15 degrees. So that is our consideration. All right, so in this case, we are going to have uh, the axial force which is required to engage uh, the clutch. All right, so calculating uh, properly, we're supposed to obtain something like 5,000. Uh, so that was going to be 5,626,227 in what? In Newtons. So remember, that is the force. So our force is uh, definitely... Uh, measured in what? In Newton. So that is how these questions are given. So I want you as an individual, do as many questions as you can. Prepare yourselves uh, for the exams which are ahead of time.